it's good to see all of you here. Welcome to worship here at LCOS. Uh, we're glad that uh, for those of you who are here in person and also those watching us, uh, joining us online, we're glad to have you here as well. Uh, today, uh, we hope to dig in to see some of God's rich blessings for us. But before we do that, first of all, I want to welcome all of our guests. We're glad that you're here today and worshiping with us as we seek God's will in our lives. A couple quick announcements for uh, people. Uh, today, after this service, we're going to be having our confirmation class. We have three young people in confirmation, and so we're going to be doing that today, as well as during Lent, which is coming up fairly soon, a couple weeks, will be Ash Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be doing some, in the end of the services, we're going to be doing some kind of dramas, but they're not like up front, they're kind of off to the side. The series is called Overheard, and uh, so you won't have to be front and center. So be thinking about whether you would like to participate in that. I believe Jerry has a couple more he's looking for for the Overheard series. And then on um, Monday, Thursday of Holy Week, we're gonna be doing the Living Last Supper. We're gonna bring Da Vinci's painting of the Living Last Supper to life. And so I'm looking for uh, a few people to serve as disciples. If you would be interested in that, um, contact me because I can talk to you a little bit more about that. Uh, services throughout uh, Ash Wednesday and all of Lent and Holy Week will be at five o'clock in the evening. Uh, starting with service here and then for uh, during Lenten services we will have a meal afterwards as well so please plan on joining us for that um, sign, up sheets for soup. sign up sheets for soup and and such are right behind the technology center out there in the lobby so please check that out and uh, sign up there's already a few good soups on the list but we could use some more so uh, looking forward to that in today's gospel, uh, we read that people were coming from all over the area, Judea, Jerusalem, Tyre, Sidon, uh, and they came to Jesus to be healed by him because he was exuding God's power. He was healing their diseases. And as he did that, Jesus turned to his disciples, uh, mortal human beings, just like you and I, and told them that the poor, the hungry, uh, those hungering for righteousness and those persecuted because of the Messiah are blessed. Uh, he assured those struggling in his name that their reward would be great in heaven. As the disciples listened, I'm sure that they probably looked back and reflected on their own lives and saw their own imperfections. Uh, but that's the beauty of the gospel. See, we sinners are made saints through the transforming work of the Spirit of Christ within us. And so as we worship today, may that same Spirit lead us into a closer walk with Jesus. As we begin our worship today, I invite you to please stand as you're able as we begin with our opening prayer. Oh God, we trust in your power to sustain us fully and completely. We know that nothing else on earth or from humankind can fulfill our inner yearning and desires the way that you do. And so as we worship you today, may we experience your healing and restoring touch. Help us to give you everything and to hold nothing back from you. May all we do and say, our every thought, word, and action be done for your glory for the furthering of your kingdom. For we ask that it may be so in the strong and true name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We begin our worship today just as we began all of our days in the Lord at our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening hymn. Two, three, four.
and acknowledge before our loving Heavenly Father our sins and our sinfulness. Father, we confess that we've fallen short of all you desire for us. We've fallen into the traps of pride, of religion, of self-destructive thought and behavior patterns. We fail to stand firm on our faith as a threat, or question the Jews in silence rather than ridicule. We have wandered along our journey as your followers, seeking a discipleship of convenience rather than surrender. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us by your Spirit, and cause us to stand strong in our faith once more. Amen. This is the good news. God has given his only son to die for us, and for his sake, he gives us new life. Our sins are permanently removed from us. We are forgiven. We are restored as those who are the dearly loved children of God, journeying with God through life, with him and towards him. The Spirit lifts us and empowers us to stand firm in our way. Amen. You may be seated as we hear our readings for today.
having heard the gospel of our Lord, let us confess our faith together in the words of the Creed. I believe in God the Father, who is all powerful and fully just. I believe in his only Son, the Father has given out to the world to save us from our sins. He became flesh, lived perfectly, yet died for the sins of everyone. We have been raised from the dead and thus defeated death for us. He has been raised on high and holds the power of the Father. On the final day, he will gather us, his redeemed people, to his heavenly kingdom forever. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who sustains us daily in life and faith. By his power, not only can separate us from the love of God, we are forever secure in faith. You may be seated as we sing. Your grip is strong and you will not let us go. And so we pray right now that you would be with us. Bless my words. Bless our thoughts. Fill us with your spirit and lead us into a closer walk with you. For we ask it in your strong and sure name. Amen. Amen. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Last week we heard Jesus speak these life-changing words as he called Peter to a new way of living. And Peter responded by leaving everything behind. Everything to follow Jesus without ever knowing where Jesus was going to lead him. And Jesus' calling wasn't just for Peter, though. He calls each of us as well to lay everything down before him and follow where he wants to lead. And last week, many of us had to 
an opportunity to respond to Jesus is called by pledging the use of our time, talents, and treasures for God's glory. We filled out our pledge cards and, and consecrated them to the Lord. And uh, by the way, for those of you who haven't done that yet, who may not have been here or who may be joining us online, uh, for those of you who are here, there's still opportunity because right in the back, out in the lobby, right just before you get to the next set of double doors, there's a, 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 a sheet there that has the uh, explanation of how to do it. There's some pledge cards and an envelope that you can fill out your pledge card, put in the envelope, make sure to put your name on it, and uh, then you can drop it in an offering plate or turn it into the office. Uh, if you happen to be online, you can call the church office or, or email us or stop by and we'll make sure that you get a pledge card. Uh, it doesn't have to even be turned in here, but it's between you and God and uh, something that you think about and pray about and how God wants you to respond. Anyways, back to our, our calling from God. Uh, Jesus' ministry is what he calls us to. And his ministry is all about bringing the kingdom of God to impact the world. He came into the world to show God's love for everybody. And so Jesus brings God's kingdom into this world and continues to bring it into the world today through you and me. Have you ever stopped to think about that? You and I are Jesus. Jesus' visible presence, real presence in today's world. <clears throat> so what you say and do, not just here in church, but throughout the week, represents Jesus to the world. And that's actually what I've been talking about uh, over the last few weeks when I've asked how you may have seen God at work in, around, or through you in everyday ways. And hopefully, hopefully by now you're, you're starting to see some of that. And your eyes are maybe a little bit more open to what God is actually inviting you to join him in doing. See, Jesus calls us to follow him. Where he's leading us is much like with Peter. We don't necessarily know. What he's going to ask of us, we also don't necessarily know. What we do know, though, is that he calls us to trust him. And as he gives us opportunities to participate with him in his ministry, the one that he's already doing all around us, as he brings his kingdom to bear on this world. As we've mentioned before, God's kingdom is quite different than what we typically expect and often provides us uh, with some challenges, in, uh, not only in the way we see God, but in the way we worship him and, and really what God wants for and from us as well. And that's exactly what's happening in today's gospel lesson. But as we read that, as you thought about that, and, and those who are blessed and woe to those that Jesus says, do we actually see the world that way? Do we think about it that way? I mean, we probably all, uh, either ourselves or at least maybe seen those lines at, uh, at the store, wait, people waiting in line to, to waste a few dollars on a chance for millions in the lottery. You know, and, and notice how the lines get a lot longer when the pot gets bigger, right? It gets up over $100 million, and everybody wants to get their chance. And maybe the lottery's not the one you're waiting for. Maybe you're waiting for that knock on your door with that great big check of $5,000 a week from Publishers Clearinghouse. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And... You know what, we've all daydreamed at one time or another about how it would be so great to suddenly not have to worry about money. We can run through all the scenarios in our head, but I think it's a lot like Dr. Seuss says, oh, the places we would go. <laughs> and the things that we would do if money wasn't an, uh, wasn't an issue. After all, most of us probably think that being wealthy is a sign of being blessed. 
But you know what? Jesus doesn't necessarily see it that way. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says. And then later he adds, but woe to you who are rich, for you've already received your comfort. This is Luke's version of the Beatitudes. We probably know them uh, we're probably a lot more familiar with them from Matthew chapter 5 because um, that's one we hear all the time. Uh, and they're a little bit, they're very similar, but there are some differences. Uh, the biggest difference probably is that Luke includes these woe statements. Jesus says that some people are blessed, but he also gives strong warnings to others. It isn't that Jesus has something about being rich and comfortable or being satisfied or laughing. It's that he wants to um, teach us something much more deeper and spiritual about God's blessings. And as we think about that, how many of you, like, I think we probably all have done this, when we're facing tough times, we're often told uh, to just count your blessings, you know, or to look on the bright side of things. Don't focus on your troubles. Focus on the good things that are happening around you. I was actually thinking of that song from The Sound of Music, uh, you know, when bad things are happening, I think of, I, I forget exactly how it goes. It was running through my head yesterday, but brown paper packages all, you know, you know the song, right? You know, we're told to think like that, and that's, that's, by the way, a natural reaction. Because the world itself is all about counting blessings. My, what a big house you have. Whoa, that's a pretty fancy car you drive. Cool, look at all those tech gadgets you got. Wow. You have such a fine-looking and successful family. We love to hear those things, right? In fact, the kingdom of this world has a completely different set of beatitudes than what God has. Where Jesus says, blessed are the poor, the hungry, and those who mourn. The world says, blessed are the rich and famous. Blessed are those who eat, drink, and party hard. Blessed are those with huge beach homes, big bank accounts, fat wallets, and seemingly have their life all together, including those picture-perfect children, pets, and meals that they post. You know the ones I'm talking about. They, they're splashed all over Facebook or TikTok or Instagram or Twitter, perfectly staged to make the world end. Blessed are those who, through non-reality reality shows or their blogs or however else they want to try, make themselves stand out, make themselves an object to be noticed for their 15 minutes of fame and fortune in the world. Yes, according to this world, blessed are those who know what they want and take it. What Jesus says, though, is in his kingdom and among his people, it's supposed to be different. In fact, it is different. God's kingdom isn't what the world expects or even wants. He sees things differently, so in his kingdom, everything appears upside down from the world's perspective. Jesus blesses those that the world says is cursed. And he says, watch out to those that the world lifts up and puts on a pedestal. That's why Jesus says, leave the things of this life. Leave your money, your time, your talents. Leave it all behind and follow me. He knows what's truly important and what we need to sustain our daily lives. And he even promises that he's going to supply it. But he also knows that if we get too much of 
those good things, we can easily lose sight of the one who's actually behind supplying all those blessings to us. And when we get comfortable in our lives like that, we start to trust in ourselves and on our own strength, our own reason and ability to supply for ourselves rather than trusting on him for everything. He knows that's how we are. In fact, he knows that so well that elsewhere he says, it's easier for a camel to go, go through the eye of a needle than a rich person or a comfortable person to enter into God's kingdom. And that's tough to hear. Because his words go against our very human nature, our values, and the ways of this world. And even his disciples at the time said, Jesus, who then can be saved? And Jesus responds, with you, with humans, it's impossible. With God, everything is possible. And that's the great news of the gospel. It's God's great reversal of everything. And thankfully, he's done it for you and I. Today's gospel lesson follows uh, a long list of Jesus' healing and, and his power, his, his show of who he is. And in one of those, Jesus heals a man that's paralyzed. A man who we know the story, he's lowered down through the ceiling by his friends right in front of Jesus. And Jesus sees him and says, great is your faith, your sins are forgiven. And when he says that, the religious leaders, those who should have known better, start to grumble among themselves. That's not what somebody can do. That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. And Jesus looks at them and he says, which is easier, to say somebody's sins are forgiven or to say, get up and take your mat and walk? But to know, but so that you know that I have the power to forgive sins, even though you've seen all these things happening, he then turns back to the man and says, get up, take your mat and go home. And the man does. And you know what? That wasn't what those Pharisees, that wasn't what the crowd expected. But that's the kingdom of God. It makes a difference. It is different. And that's why Jesus' ministry, his teachings and miracles are always a surprise to people. The lame walk. The blind see. The sick are healed. The dead are raised. The poor are blessed. The hungry are satisfied. And those who weep now have a reason to laugh and rejoice. It's what we call grace. G-R-A-C-E. If you're in my confirmation class, you know grace stands for God's riches at Christ's expense. And the wonderful thing about grace is that it's shocking. God's grace is surprising. It's not what we'd expect or even imagine. What God did for us in Jesus wasn't on any of our minds or could have even been considered. And it certainly wasn't what or isn't what we deserve. Jesus, the Son of God, came to set things right between sinful human beings and a holy, perfect, and just God of the universe. And it was all according to God's plan. It's not a surprise to him. It's not unexpected to him what Jesus went through. But it certainly is to us, his creation. And that's why everything about Jesus, about the very nature of God, shocks this world. Because he is and does what is completely opposite of what we would think. Yes, God's kingdom is not what people expect. And God's establishing his kingdom through the coming of his son, Jesus, isn't what people would expect either. Jesus' whole life is a testimony to that. It happens in every 
time Jesus is experienced in some way, we're told that the people who were there were amazed. From the very beginning, the Messiah comes in a way that we wouldn't expect. The king of kings is born in a barn. The Lord of lords com comes to a small hole-in-the-wall town in the middle of nowhere. God Almighty didn't come as a warring conqueror. Instead, he comes humble, lowly, and riding on the donkey. The righteous judge comes not to condemn and destroy, but he comes to bring peace and justice. The way, the truth, and the life came to die so that he could bring life, eternal life, to those that are destined for the grave. And guess what? That's you and I. You and I are destined for the grave because of who we really are in our human nature. Because if we're really honest with ourselves, we know that we often live and are driven by the Beatitudes of this world. We seek for ourselves. We trust in ourselves. We depend and count on our own strength and power. We seek our own glory. But even though that's who we are by nature, and believe me, if we really think about that and admit it to ourselves, we have to say that we're sinful through and through in our thoughts, and our words, and our deeds, because they're not what God desires of us, and they're not pleasing to him, or glorifying to him, or even helpful to others most of the time. But thankfully, thankfully, we also know that it, as God knows that, because he knows us even better than we know ourselves, he's the God of truth who doesn't lie to himself like we do. He does the unexpected. He gives us hope. Hope for this life, but also hope for the next. St. Paul says that if we've heard and responded to Jesus' call and given up the things of this world for him, put them at his feet for his use, for his glory, we can be confident because we have hope. Not just hope for this world, because if that's all our hope is for, for this world that will be blessed in some way here and now, we're to be pitied more than anybody else. But our hope is not only for this life, but that God is going to be with us and comfort us and strengthen us through all the things of this world. Like he says, all things work for the good of those who love him. But it's also a hope that goes on for eternity. It's an eternal life. Because we know that in this life, we're going to struggle. In this life, we're going to face trials and temptations and pain and sorrow and loss. But we have a God who comes to us and says, I give you hope. Not just here and now, but for all eternity because he doesn't treat us as our sin deserves. He shows mercy. He shows compassion. He does the unexpected and lavishes his love on us. And even though we tend to still walk away from him at times, and we tend to choose our own ways, he didn't leave us to what we deserve. Even though we may be poor in spirit, he says something different to us. He says, you're blessed because the, my kingdom belongs to you. And as we hunger and thirst for his righteousness, he says, he promises that he will satisfy us. Satisfy our every need. And so instead of turning away from us and rejecting us or abandoning us, which is what we truly deserve, God does the unexpected. He shows up in his grace. He makes us his dearly loved children. And by golly, that is who we are. That is who we are. We are heirs of his heavenly kingdom. Blessed here in this world because we have a hope that goes beyond whatever this world can throw at us. And a hope for eternity. May, may we live confidently in that each and every day. For we ask it in the name of Jesus who makes it all possible. Amen.
And now may the love of God guide, guard, and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus and the life everlasting. Amen. We rise for prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for all of your blessings, but especially the blessing of lavishing your love on us through your Son, Jesus. Father, in him you do the unexpected. You lay down your life for your sinful creation. A people that turn their backs and walk their own ways. Father, we've chosen our own ways often. We thank and praise you that you still love us and call us your own. Father, we also thank you for all the blessings, the daily blessings that you continue to provide for us that sustain our body and life here in this world. Father, we are blessed beyond measure, far more than many others in other countries, and we ask that you would help us to remember that and to use those blessings for your glory by being your visible hands and feet, your real presence to those who are, well, those who are in need, those who might be hungry or homeless or naked, those who are unemployed, those who are struggling with loneliness or who are afraid. Father, help us to stand with those who are being persecuted and oppressed, to stand for justice and what is right. Help us to serve you humbly and faithfully. Father, we pray for leaders, not only in our church, but also in our nation that would do the same, that would humble themselves and seek your glory and your will rather than their own power, their own strength and their own welfare. Father, we thank you. We thank you for being faithful even when we are not. And we lift up before you, Lord, all those who are struggling with cancer, COVID, and other diseases of body, mind, and spirit. Those facing or recovering from surgery or illness. All those, Lord, that we name now before you. Father, you know those on our hearts. And we know that you have even more knowledge and more on your heart than we do. We pray that you would open our eyes to see those around us in need. But we also pray that you would be with them and their families. Surround them with your love and care. Heal them according to your good and gracious will. Show them how in and through this time of trial you are working for the good of all those who love you. Father, we also lift up all those who mourn the loss of loved ones in this life, remembering your promise of eternal life and the hope that we have. We pray that you would be with the family of William Larry O'Patterson and Jay Lee, that you would surround each and every one of them with your presence and your comfort. Give them peace and remind them of this promise of not only hope in this world, but in hope for the world to come with everlasting life with you for all those who love and serve you. Father, we also thank and praise you for the gift of life and lift up Bernie, Georgette, and Larry as they celebrate their birthdays this week. Be with them and with all of us. In our daily lives, help us to surrender all for your glory using our time, talents, and treasures to further your kingdom as you wish, and joining you in the opportunities that you place before us. Be in all of our relationships that your love, grace, and forgiveness may be overwhelming in each and every one of them, that we not only experience that among ourselves, but that we witness it to those who see us so that they might know your love, grace, and mercy for themselves. Father, these things and all else on our hearts we lay before your throne, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ loves us so much that he came in a real and tangible way into this world to be God's sacrifice for the sin that you and I live in each and every day. He continues to come to us in very real ways as well. Not only in us, but to us through bread and wine. And that's why on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, Drink of it all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So remembering his death, his resurrection, his resurrection and ascension, we await his coming again in glory. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may be seated. <clears throat>
may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith, the life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. 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 Please rise. As we come towards the conclusion of our worship together, we go back out into the world to continue our worship in the way we live each and every day, being Jesus' very real presence in our world. Because we are his sons and daughters, that is who we are, we, and we live it in all that we do. Or work. So we go. We go strengthened and refreshed. We go with God's blessings. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious on you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. As you head out for those who are present here, there's offering plates in the back as well as uh, receptacles for your papers and that. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.